I got a treat for you today. We are going over to Kathy's campsite. I met her this week at the Solos Escapees event. And she is going to be 82 years old. She travels the country with her sweet doggy. She's waiting for us. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Linda. What a gorgeous evening, huh? Mm, lovely. Mm, lovely. Perfect. And this is your travel companion here. This is Kip. Kip. Hello, Kip. Do you want to be in the video? You're a beauty. All right, Kathy has got quite a special story for all of us, a ministry of sorts, and hope you'll join us. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Linda. It's a gorgeous night in the neighborhood. It is beautiful out Beautiful here. night. It has been such a pleasure meeting you. The other night we were at the campfire, right? Thank you, yes. Yeah, and we just, that's one of the coolest things I think about groups where you come solo, you don't know anybody, and all of a sudden, you get to know people that could be friends for the rest of your life. That's true. Yeah. And you have been quite the blessing to me. I'm, I just can't. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Thank Seriously. you. Seriously. Um, I know you came over and you said, you know, something about my channel and being a ministry. And I, and I agree, you know, that God has given me this, this opportunity to share his love with others. And I, I could feel that presence with you. Oh. And when... We started talking, and you told me you were 81. I mean, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> and I said, no. And you're like, yeah, almost 82. And uh, I was like, well, Kathy, you have a ministry. <laughs> and so can't wait to, um, you know, get started here and just hear a little bit about your background right. and, and um what has brought you here and what you, you know, and what you have uh, done over the course of uh, quite a few years now. And you've got a beautiful uh, Ram Pro Master that we'll tour a little bit later. Yes. Maybe in this video or maybe in the next video. <laughs> you know how that goes. Sometimes it becomes a two part. Yeah. Um, just to, I guess, bring people up to speed a little bit. So um, you were uh, previously married. Yes, yeah. I was married for a, a long time, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, I've also been uh, not with my husband for a long time. Okay, all right. So I've been alone for 20, 30 years. Okay, and we have something in common with, um, I was telling you about Celebrate Recovery and yes. that kind of thing, so yes. you were sharing. Yeah, my husband was an alcoholic, and, and uh, I was a different person back then, and I did... Al-Anon. It was about for 20 years. Al-Anon. So you were really working on yourself. I was. And it made a huge difference in my whole life. And I was able to um, leave him and be the independent woman that I really wanted to be. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> all right. Empowerment 2.0. Do we need you to bet. go any further? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's wonderful because I think, it, you know, it is really important, a marriage or not, that we hold up our own mirror. Because uh, too often, and I'm guilty that I hold up other people's mirrors, but I don't hold <laughs> I don't hold up my own mirror. <laughs> so wow. So all right. Um, thank you for sharing that. And 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 you have um, one child or two? I had two children. Two children. Okay. All righty. And, and they're grown, and I have two grandsons, and they're grown. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Um, and how long now have you? Um, well. First, well, we'll go back a little bit further. Have you always had like a travel camping bug in you? What, what, what's your, what's your story on that? Well, I always loved camping. Mm -hmm. I never thought much about traveling as so much. Um, when I, when I, <clears throat> I had horses for a number of years, and when I had the truck and I had a camper on the back and pulled a horse trailer and we'd go horse camping. So oh. where we'd go out and camp in the woods just like this, and then during the day we'd saddle up and go on a trail ride. Wow. And then come back and we'd be camping. Wow. And I loved doing that. All right. So I never thought I really wanted to travel, but my mother was a traveler. She was still RVing in a van similar to this, well into her 80s. Are you serious? Wow. So I think I inherited it, and I, but I didn't ever think that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Until it's like a switch. I thought I'd have horses for the until I was 90. Huh. 
All right. And somehow the, all the horses got taken away. Okay. And I, and Lord just replaced that with a, a desire to do the RVing thing. So um wasn't until 11 years ago that I could financially pull it off because um, I got a little inheritance mm -hmm. enough to buy my first RV, paid cash for it. Uh, it was a Class C, and I did my first trip down to Quartzsite <laughs> in Southern California. And from and you're from Washington. I'm from Washington okay. State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a bit of a drive to yes, get down there. Yes, it sure is. Um, but that particular year, I only, was only gone for two and a half months, and I blew every penny that I had from that inheritance. Oh. Went on RV parks and uh, repairs and souvenirs and flying my grandson down and just had a really good time. Eating out. <laughs> eating out. Eating out. <laughs> But when I got you were home, living life was, large. <laughs> when I got home, I realized I was broke, and I couldn't, <laughs> and I could no longer afford to travel in this class. All right. And how long was that that you had? Oh, one year. One year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and I'm sure you probably have managed your finances quite well through the years. But once you got on the road, it was like. Well, well actually, it has gotten better. Uh -huh. It's gotten better. I don't know how that happened, but it has improved All considerably. Right. The Lord's just totally blessed. This whole lifestyle for okay. me. Okay, and God, well, God has His way. He does. He wanted he you does. to. He, okay, what did you just he did do? He want me to do that. Yeah, blow your money up. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was kind of a learning thing. Like, I didn't really need to do all that. There must be a better way. So, um, tried to figure out how I could continue RVing when I didn't have any money and I couldn't afford to drive this <laughs> Class C. So, but darn it, I like this lifestyle. I want to do this. But I had this pickup truck still that I had had a camper, a, a truck oh, camper mm -hmm. on. Oh, okay. And I thought, well, if I sell the motorhome and then turn around and buy a little cheap travel trailer, then I'd have money left over between the two to travel with for another year. Oh, right. Sell one and, yeah. And buy the other one that left me that. some cash. Absolutely. I, so I went off and, and did that trip again. Yep. And... <clears throat> Did that with the travel trailer for six years, and I had some really nice trips. One of them took me all the way up to Jasper in Canada, Ooh. up the Ice Fields Parkway, and I was—I can't remember—it was a three-week or six-week trip that I, I really liked that. But after six years, and I was getting into my mid seventies by then, um, I realized that I was having difficulty physically hooking and unhooking. The travel trailer from oh, the truck. Gotcha. Now, were you full? You weren't full time no, in this six years. Full -time. Never I've, full time. No, okay. Um, Just wanted to stop. I didn't want to interrupt you, but no, I, I live on a property that my brother and I bought together um, in Snohomish, Washington. Okay. And so that's my home base. Okay. And uh, he built this nice little studio apartment for me, and and there's nothing I can sell or do anything different with. So I mm -hmm. just that's my home base, and nice. when I'm tired of driving. I go home right, right, for a while and, right. and regroup. So I interrupted you, but then you were having the trouble with uh, hooking and unhooking. Yeah. Okay. So there was a point at which I thought I wanted to go to Alaska. Okay, girl. And I looked <laughs> at my truck and I looked at my trailer. I have an old truck. It was a 98 Dodge Ram and an old trailer. It was only a 2000 something. And I thought, and then old me? <laughs> Something's got to change, and it probably ain't going to be me. <laughs> so I got rid of the trailer and sold the truck and went shopping and bought this van. It was a completely empty metal shell. And this was in 2019. The van that you have now? The van that I have now was 2019 is when I bought it. That was kind of before the whole big craze uh, started. Yeah, you're even. cutting edge here. Yeah, I actually. <laughs> but I got. I had been studying a lot of uh, Bob Wells videos and getting a lot of information about how to build a van. And so at 76, I was building out my own van. You were building out your own van. Yeah, I did. Well, I'll say I did it myself, but I had lots of help. Okay. 
Fair enough. And what that we, sounds awesome. What I ended up with has been remodeled two or three times. Okay. It's uh, just a home built, so a lot, anything in there can come out. All right. Okay. You're giving us a little tease, a little preview of coming attractions. <laughs> coming attractions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So when you bought your van, you'd l let go of the travel trailer. You, something had to go, you said, because everything was getting old. Everything was getting it, old. So we started out with a new, uh, maybe an old me, but we have a new van. It's a 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I figured I could trust it to get me to Alaska. All right. So I made that plan uh, at that time. That's why I bought the van. Um, but then that following year, I wasn't quite ready to go to Alaska. And of course, 2020 was the year of the, the, year of yeah. the COVID <laughs> and uh, nobody was going anywhere. Right. But in the meantime, I was uh, an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. I did that for eight years up until the end of this last year. And between that and my social security and retirement, um, I had the funds to keep building it and pay it off, paid off my car and uh, started planning um, my trip to Alaska. Now, a complete reversal of your first time around a year and you're broke and now you're paying off things. Paid that, it off and I've got money in the bank. <laughs> that is fantastic. It's, I call it God's checking account. God's, wow, wow. Because somehow there ends up being more money than than I thought I had. It just keeps getting, it keeps growing. Wow. <laughs> and then right. I'm out doing these trips. I've done two cruises this year as you well as these trips. And I don't know where that. How that is happening. God is blessing you. It, he is really blessing is. you. I really believe that I'm doing what he wants me God's to do. God's checking account. <laughs> that is a perfect name for it. Because it really is his. It is. Yes. It no. is. I have given all my finances to him. Mm -hmm. And anytime we run into problems, I just say, it's your money, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if I have a problem and I have to pay for something. Yep. It's, it's it's his money. Yes, that's that's fabulous. Now something else that we just kind of brushed over a little bit, you kind of fit in there and it's really, really impressive to me. <laughs> Uber driver in your seventies. How many years? Eight years. Eight I, I years. I started in the middle of November of May of two thousand fifteen. Part time. It was not my full time thing and I when I didn't want to <clears throat> When I wanted to go on a trip, I just could uh, leave the app alone and go on my trip and be gone up to six months. Come back, turn the app on, and and drive some more. Okay, ladies I and love gentlemen, to drive. <laughs> you <laughs> you heard it. How do I make money on the road? An Uber driver. Yeah. Wow, and that's the same thing as people shopping now too. I mean, I was working at a grocery store where. What those, there's those apps where people shop right, for you, like the Instacart and yes. that kind of thing. Yeah, you I, you go, girl. Yeah, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And people would ask me, "Well, aren't you scared, or are you? Do you have have you had any problems?" And I go, "Not me. I just don't have any problems. I feel totally protected. I have no fear." God said, do not be afraid, and I just chose to not be afraid of anything. Yeah, I remember that at the campground the yeah. other night. Do not fear, do not fear, do yeah. not fear. So I mean, I've, you are I've chosen. You, you are singing my song. Yeah, I have chosen to not be afraid. Chosen, yes, good word. Yeah, it's just, and you are chosen. Is that out of obedience, I suppose, because he said, don't be afraid. So it's okay, I won't. Wow, out of obedience. Yeah. But I did have two rules for myself while I was driving with Ubers. One was I... Didn't drive at night. Don't mm -hmm. drive at night because mm -hmm. you can't see at night anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I would not pick up in downtown. Okay. I worked near Seattle, but I yeah. wouldn't pick up. Yeah. It just was one of my personal rules. Well, and, and, and I think probably that's... Probably saved me from a lot. Mm-hmm. I call that street smart. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't go out walking through a, a dark alley at night. Right. And, and that's being, just... being the country girl and the person that likes to drive, I preferred the country. I would always want to have long drives that would go as far out in the country as we could get. And and I tell people I I drive to drive. Yeah. I drive for Uber and then I then I would go get in my van or vehicle whatever and drive around the country. 
I just, I and just. And then I'd so come impressed. home and get right back in my car and go Ubering. It was like an addiction. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, this is all about empowerment 2.0, and I think you're taking it to 3.0 now. <laughs> okay, so now we're on our way to Alaska, right? Okay, 2022. I determined that was my year for Alaska. So I, I knew another lady that was going. In fact, she came and stayed at our house in her RV. Um, for three days until she had her reservation to go out of Bellingham to go up to Haines. And on that very same day, I took off in the easterly direction and went up um, toward uh, Banff mm -hmm. and the Lake Louise area. And three weeks later, we met up in Valdez together and spent eight days in Valdez. And so I traveled in everywhere you could possibly travel in in Alaska, pretty much by myself, although I did have companions. I like doing this, you know, traveling by myself, but meeting up with people. Yes, yes. Well, we were talking the other night, too, that, you know, people when people ask you, are you traveling by yourself? But really, yes and no, because as yeah. soon as you meet people, like, yeah, you came right. here by yourself. We, well, we when do I a lot of things. I drive by myself. Self. Yeah, I don't yeah. like caravanning. I don't like following other people, and I don't no. like any other I agree. people following me. It I just, agree. That just doesn't work for me. No, it doesn't for me either, but then you meet all these wonderful yeah. people. So we're meeting more people on the road, in my opinion, than a small circle. As you get older, your circle shrinks. It it's does. your church friends. It's maybe a neighbor or two. People pass. People have other things to do, but out here, it's like you could meet a new friend every day for the rest of your life you if you could, wanted to. You could because we have we are like minded. If we're RV, if we're out doing this, we're meeting up with the people that are doing the same thing. Yeah. At home, I've got friends, but the funny thing is, is, I I I might have friends at home, but I meet up with them out here. This I is, won't meet up with them at the home. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> interesting. I'll meet up with them when we're out traveling. Yes, and the conversations <laughs> and everything else, it's a whole different story. It's a bunny trail. So you did yeah. your eight days in Alaska. Well, eight days in Valdez. In Valdez, okay. I, and I, I did get around. I went to Seward and Homer and uh, Anchorage and stayed a couple weeks in Eagle River. Um, a lady I had met up with in Radium Hot Springs who kind of caravanned with me because she was a little nervous about the trip. Um, <laughs> you were being was, a good servant. Was a camp host at an Eagle River uh, campground and had arranged as a camp host to have a site for me for free mm -hmm. for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's where I had my 80th birthday. So the trip to Alaska was kind of my 80th birthday present to myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was up there for almost four months, got home, Labor Day-ish of that same summer. We left on May 11th and got home on Labor Day. How so exciting. That was quite a trip. Oh my gosh, Kathy, so wonderful. Yeah. All right, so from Alaska, then give a fill us in just a little bit more before we see your rig tour and things that you want to share and well, I, your I travels. Had, um, <clears throat> I had um, thought about going back to Alaska, but I was with a group at the Solos uh, Solos rallies in Quartzsite and I overheard someone say if they had their choice of going back to Alaska or going back to the Maritimes they would have chosen the Maritimes. You're not telling me you're going to the Maritimes. I am telling you I'm going to the Maritimes. <laughs> so that I knew the story would me. get better. I knew <laughs> that intrigued me a lot I, because um, some of our friends want, wanted to go to Alaska last summer and I said um, I'm not ready to do that long drive to Alaska, but if I'm going to do a long drive, I want to go somewhere new. So I decided I would go to um, the Maritimes. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do that last summer. That was my plan. Um, but I had done a cruise with my daughter up uh -oh. to Alaska. Oh, wow. <laughs> an Alaskan cruise. I did that for her birthday. Wow. And uh, by the time we got back, we'd gotten sick on the ship. And by the time we got back and I wanted to start my trip east, mm -hmm. it was getting too hot. Okay. And I don't do hot very mm -hmm. well right. at all. So I actually <clears throat> made it as far as East Glacier and ended up turning around and coming back. I did another northwest trip 
um, well, a lot of that, the trips I did that just kind of covered the Northwest, like um, Vancouver Island, mm -hmm. I explored there. I went down to Idaho and spent a week with a girlfriend that was uh, a camp host. And I uh, went up been to Montana and saw my nephew and his wife and uh, ended up going back home. So I kind of went, well, fine, I'll just <laughs> fly. So I did that in October. I flew to Boston, rented a car for five days, drove down to New Jersey, stayed a night with a couple of nights with a SKP solo friend, and then we went to Brooklyn and I caught a 10 day cruise that went up the East Coast and ended up in Quebec City and I flew home from Montreal. So I felt like I got a really good sampling of what I had planned on doing the drive for. Yes, yes. I got to see, you know, the towns in Nova Scotia and, um, and in Quebec. So um, I was satisfied with that. And then uh, January 4th, packed up and headed back south, which I did most winters anyway, mm -hmm. went to California and, and uh, Quartzite. Quartzite, yep. But this year, <clears throat> instead of going back home, I decided to do a loop trip around the country. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Here we go <laughs> again. Driving again. Yeah. I wanted so, to high-five you about five times already, <laughs> you Uber girl. <laughs> so I was, in, uh, I was in Arizona for about a month, and then I spent a couple weeks in New Mexico exploring mostly national parks. And down to Big Bend in Texas, and over to San, Tan San Antonio, mm. and uh, did uh, <clears throat> Alamo and the river boat ride, river walk boat yep. ride, and then I went down to Corpus Christi, stayed four nights on the beach at Port Aransas, then worked my, and then went to Galveston and worked my way up to <clears throat> Livingston, Texas, which is the headquarters for SKPs, and stayed there for a few days. And then um, drove over to Natchez, Tennessee, and drove all the way up the 444-mile Natchez Trace. Wow. Which is a beautiful, beautiful drive. Long and all the same, but no stops, no, no lights, nothing. It's just you can't even see any towns as you're passing, and there's so much foliage. Ended up in um, Franklin and Nashville. Got to see old Grand Ole Opry, and then worked my way down through Al Al Alabama to here in North Florida. So, all these years, and it was a lot of West Coast, and you have gotten yourself to the East Coast. That was my first time past the Mississippi River, other than that flying trip I did in the fall. Yes. Since I was 10 years old. Wow. And now... At almost 82 years old, you're heading to the Maritimes. I'm heading to the Maritimes. Wow. I want to be in Newfoundland for one or two months, you know, July, August, maybe even earlier. So you're leaving from here? I'm leaving from here, working my way up north. I'm going to zigzag across. I'll uh, spend some time in Georgia, south and North Carolina. Uh, I have some family to go see in uh, Virginia. And then... Uh, Upstate New York, Maine. I've got friends to see in Maine. Got to see Acadia. And then I got to see that on my on my cruise. Oh, okay, okay. Bar Harbor. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got to do that, but I'll get to do it more now. Oh. Yeah. If I get there early enough, I'll be able to drive it around in it in my own vehicle. Wow. So yes, yes. So I, I'm October looking right now. That. You know, when do I want to take the ferry across to Newfoundland? Okay. Um, there's things like the Iceberg Festival and uh, rides out to see whales and other wildlife. Wow, uh, you're making my, my three and a half <laughs> years look like, like nothing compared to what you're thinking about doing. Talk oh. about like just stretching your horizon to, to go see, do more. Yeah. Wow, Kathy, can I come yeah. with you? Can I? <laughs> Can I go behind in the SUV? You want to be the fly on the wall? <laughs> I do. I do. I want to come. I want to come with you. I so. hope anything I do, and if I figure it's Lord inspired, then anything I do, it has to be an inspiration to other women who might want to do the same. And if the only thing that's holding them back is some kind of fear, then I'm here to say there's nothing really to be afraid of. 
Um, people ask me, well, how do you not be afraid? I just kind of preach. I don't carry anything with me that, that would be a defense or... Mm -hmm. You're not You're of, not carrying. No, I have no security measures other than locking my doors when I'm at yep. night. Yep. Um, but I just pretend Common wherever I stuff. am that I'm at home. And I'm not afraid when I'm driving around at home. So I just pretend I'm home. Like anybody else who lived here wouldn't be afraid to drive around. Yeah, and so you, you, you take that confidence level, and it's almost like you know God is with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I, I just want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What a delight. Wow. So, you know, in closing before, it will be part two. It will be part two <laughs> because, you know, nobody wants to sit down and watch a 40-minute video. So just, you know, subscribe, click the bell, <laughs> right, do all that. And come back and see Kathy's Ram 1500 that she's built out herself with some help <laughs> and how everything can be removed. So like a new, no build build type right. thing. But um, anything else, Kathy, that, you know, um, that was a beautiful semi closing. And if you want to <laughs> close further with any, any thoughts of, um, I'm just so excited for you. Oh, thank you. I'm just, I just really feel blessed to even be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And, I might not be able to walk as much as I used to because I, I started out backpacking when I was 13 years old and uh, did a lot of hiking and backpacking through up through my 40s. Oh wow! Okay. Um, Forgot about mentioning camping yeah. out at camping out in the woods under you know just out on the trail. Yes. And I loved doing that, but age has taken its toll on me in certain mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. certain areas. And, mm -hmm. But I can still sit, and I can still lay down, and I can still see a little bit. I mean, uh -huh. my vision's going, too. That's one of the reasons I quit Ubering. Um, but as long as I can keep moving. Keep even, moving. Just keep moving. And, and I feel like I'm following in my mother's tire tracks, <laughs> so to speak. Mother's tire tracks. Yeah, I just... she did a she <laughs> That's precious. <laughs> she did a lot of this after she passed yeah. away from uh, terminal cancer. Your dad? My dad. Um, then my mom wanted to travel by herself, and she had her. She got a little van, similar to mine, but all built out fancy. And uh, she did that well into her 80s. And I think that's kind of where I got that from. Oh. <laughs> that tendency to want to travel. Um, so. Wow. Come by thank honestly. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. And she was in her 70s. She was in her seven. She was 76 when he passed. So she was traveling a, a, almost another 10 years. Yes. And um, you'll have to share the difference between how your mom's was, because I know you told me that in yeah. the next video. Okay. You know, how, how mom's was and what you learned from mom. Exactly. And how you made it your own. Exactly. Kathy, I can't thank you enough for this evening of, of sharing and talking to you. And I know that there are going to be so many people inspired by what you had to say. And you, you were telling goal. me, yeah, that, that friends have told you what an inspiration you are. <laughs> and you, I mean, you are to so many. Well, and I just, I just thank you. I just thank you. Thank you for you, doing this. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. And I like to end all my videos with uh, blessings in your day. Oh, thank you. And joy in your journey thank you you're welcome enjoy in everybody that's watching in their journey however that looks for you yeah. all right we'll see you around for the tour all right of the ram 1500 promaster yep. <laughs> yay yay <laughs>